Hey, what's up guys? 2023 gave us some amazing new cars from the Lambo Storato to the Aston DB12 and of course the Tesla Cybertruck, if you live in America. But 2024 looks like it's going to be just as good as 2023. So I thought I'd share some of the motors that I'm most looking forward to and you might be surprised by some of the stuff I've picked. But before we get going, just want to remind you, if you haven't already subscribed, do yourself a favor and hit that button. Next year, we're going to be driving almost every car on this list and you don't want to miss it. Plus, we are very close to a million subscribers. Come join the fun. All right, first up, Mercedes AMG GT. We're expecting big things from this one. The last one was an absolute riot to drive and brilliant to look at, especially that Black Series, a proper cartoony coupe. The first bit of good news with this new car is that it hasn't gone electric. For now, it's sticking with a twin turbo V8 petrol engine underneath that very, very long bonnet. They're gonna make two versions, a GT55 with 469 horsepower and a GT63 with 577. The 63 will do 0 to 62 in about three seconds. It's four wheel drive, a standard this time, so not as leery as before, but it does have 4Matic Plus, so you can send all the power to the rear wheels if you're not afraid of very, very large insurance claims. Now, this one's gonna be a bit more practical because you can add a couple of tiny rear seats this time around which is almost certainly to entice people considering a Porsche 911. It's always nice having somewhere to put your luggage, I guess, or your friends with short legs. Right, Porsche Macan. Unlike the AMG GT, the Macan is going electric, but for this car, I do think it's probably a wise move. I know, I know it's a shame that there'll be one less SUV with a proper engine noise, but look at the Taycan. That thing proved that an electric Porsche can be amazing to drive. So the 2024 Macan will almost certainly remain one of the best SUVs to drive on the planet. It's built on a different platform to the Taycan, on a whole new chassis developed with Audi. But Porsche took it away really early and set about trying to make sure it feels like a proper Porsche. Three versions are coming, from a basic one with 430 horses to a 600 horsepower turbo model. That one has a thousand newton meters of torque and that's gonna make it one of the quickest family crossovers on the market and hopefully a bit cheaper than a Taycan. Winner. Next up, the Renault 5. Yeah, it's back. About time as well. They've made it electric this time though. But before you start whining about the halcyon days of Renault 5 turbos and getting all upset about electricity ruining everything, listen, hear me out. The original Renault 5 was all about affordability and being practical, especially for the masses. And that's exactly what Renault is planning here. Prices are gonna start at less than 20 grand, which will make this an absolute game changer for electric cars and they haven't just shoved the guts from an old Renault Zoe into a new body to get it down to that price. It's built on an all new cutting edge electric platform, including tech like vehicle to grid charging, like a Taycan, and the battery will be good for 250 miles of range. Looks the business as well, doesn't it? I reckon next year, you're gonna see these everywhere. Next up, it's the BMW X2 and its electric twin, the iX2. BMW called the original X2 a coupe SUV when really it just looked like a slightly flatter BMW X1 or a slightly taller one series. So this time around, the X2 and iX2 have been given the classic BMW sporty SUV treatment, as in a sloping rear end like an X4 or X6. I'll let you be the judge as to whether that's an improvement, but all X2s and iX2s come in M Sport trim, a standard as well, so they're gonna be sporty-ish. Plus, there's gonna be an M35 model of the X2 with 300 horsepower. It's worth saying, though, that the basic electric version has more power than the 35i petrol version, 313 horsepower versus 300, and it's only 0.2 slower to 62. It will do it in 5.6. The interior is a massive step up as well, mainly because it feels like a shrunken down iX now. And despite the coupe style roof, it's got more interior space and boot space than before. Oh, and in an effort to make it seem more fun, and let's be honest, a bit more like a Tesla, you can play games on the screen using your phone as a controller. I'm just telling you here, because when you come to buy one, you'll never use that feature because the games are rubbish, but you know, I'm doing you a favor, you're welcome. 
Now, the Aston Martin Valhalla. It started life as a V6 hybrid concept in 2019 that Aston Martin co-developed with Red Bull Racing. It's changed a little bit since then. Red Bull is still involved and it's designed all the aero parts that cover the carbon fiber chassis, but the engine is now a Mercedes AMG 4 litre twin turbo V8 mid-mounted with two electric motors to help out, one on the front axle and one on the gearbox for a 950 horsepower total. I think you'd agree, it's an amazing looking thing. It's got dihedral doors like a Koenigsegg and it spits out its waste through twin turbo tailpipes on the roof. The Valhalla is probably the car I'm most looking forward to driving next year if I can get my hands on one. They're only making 999 in each one for about 700,000 pounds probably. And you know how it goes with these things. They're all probably sold out already. Right, the Citroen EC3. 2024's Citroen C3 could have a massive impact on the car market. Like the Renault 5, the C3 will become electric only in 2024, hence EC3. And Citroen is promising exceptional value for money. It's aiming for sub 25,000 pounds starting price. And that actually would be exceptional when you look at all the details. It's much roomier than the last C3. It's got much more modern and high tech insides and every single version is gonna get Citroen's progressive hydraulic cushion suspension as standard. Yeah, totally stupid name, but if you've ever tried it, then you'll know it makes ride quality that rivals a Magic Kingdom parade or a cloud. In fact, it could be the first electric super mini that rides like a luxury car. We'll have to wait and see how it is for handling, but let's face it, people won't care either way. It's gonna be cheap, the battery's gonna be good, uh, it'll do nearly 200 miles of range, and it charges fast as well, 100 kilowatts. Look out for this one. All right, next up, MG Cyberstar. I think that's how you say it. After years on the SUV trail, MG is back in the Roadster game in a big way. In all ways bar one, it follows the classic MG formula. Two doors, two seats, retractable fabric roof, rear wheel drive, but this time it's electric. Two versions are coming, a basic one with 335 horsepower, driving the rear wheels, good for naught to 62 in 4.6 seconds, and a dual motor, four wheel drive version with more than 500 horsepower. Not convinced? You might be when you consider this. Right, the chassis dynamics in this car were developed by a man called Marco Fanello. Marco's day job used to be working on Michael Schumacher's F1 car at Ferrari when he was winning all the races there. The battery is pretty huge as well, 77 kilowatt hours, which means it's good for 300 miles of range. And if MG can keep the price as close to 50,000 pounds as possible, which they might, this could be a classic in the making. Next up, Ford Mustang. Love these. I love it so much that I actually bought one myself. And you might have been worried that the proper Mustang was going the way of the Mach-E, but thankfully the good old petrol powered muscle car lives on. It's wider than before, the overhangs are shorter, and the air vents are bigger, but more importantly, it's still got that five liter V8. This time with 480 horsepower and a manual gearbox as well. Now, for those people who want a more focused experience than the standard GT, the dark horse version has upgraded suspension, better aerodynamics, more power, up from 486 horsepower to 500, and it will be the basis of Ford's motorsport efforts from 2024, including GT3 racing and NASCAR. And there's even a GTD version, the first ever diesel Mustang, just kidding. This one's a carbon fiber bodied, 800 horsepower, track optimized, but road legal monster that Ford engineers created out of hours just to see what they could achieve. I mean, that might be a PR story, but either way, we've got a new 250 grand mega Mustang and I can't wait to drive the pants off any of them, actually. Now, the cyber thingy. What's left to say about the cyber truck that hasn't already been said a million times on X? It feels like the Cybertruck's been around for a decade already, and it kind of has in a way, capturing the imagination from the moment that Elon Musk declared he'd like to build a Tesla pickup truck back in 2011. Now I know that you're gonna have strong feelings either way about the Cybertruck, but that's kind of the point, isn't it? There's absolutely nothing like it. So yeah, you might have seen pictures of horribly misaligned panel gaps and the video of the bulletproof windows being smashed by a gently thrown metal ball and the range extender feature that's actually just a massive external battery plonked on top of the loading bay. And you might have concluded that the Cybertruck is just a bit of a joke, but 
for every one of you, there's someone who sees the future in the vague form of a pickup truck. A pickup truck that can beat a Porsche 911 in a drag race while towing a Porsche 911. So what do I think? I'm gonna wait until I've driven it, which should be very early in 2024. So make sure you come back for my verdict on that. Back to normality now with the Dacia Spring. But it's kind of a new normal because the Dacia Spring looks like it will be the cheapest electric car we've ever had when it comes to the UK in 2024. It's already Europe's lowest priced EV and if the prices translate over here, that will be 18 grand. That's half the price of a Peugeot E208, a car with significantly less space than this. What's the catch? Well, there are a few. It's not exactly cutting edge. The battery isn't much bigger than the one in the first Nissan Leaf, so you're probably looking at not much more range than 100 miles in real life. And the motor has 44 horsepower, or is that hamster power? I'm not sure. It takes 19 seconds to get to 62, so you're not gonna spring anywhere in this thing. You'll gently uncoil, if that. It's also got a one-star safety rating, so why is it on my list? I'm not sure. I just think people will wanna see it reviewed, which is why I'm gonna promise you, personally, I'm gonna make sure that Alex Legui does that review. You're welcome, she'll be fine. Right, from one end of the electric spectrum to the other, it's the G-Wagon. Yep, I said electric and I said G-Wagon. The 2024 G will become an EV next year called the EQG. It's like Gordon Ramsay declaring he's going vegan. <laughs> but don't worry, it's still the all-conquering G-Class that we know and absolutely love. We don't have much technical detail yet, it's still officially a concept at this stage, but we do know it will use the same ladder frame chassis as today's petrol model and will get four wheel drive from an electric motor near each wheel. It'll even have a two speed gearbox that will mimic the low ratio mode in an old school 4x4. But its coolest trick that we know of so far is that it can tank turn 360 degrees on the spot. I'm gonna use that feature every day. Let's be honest though, not many people are using their G-Classes off-road, so the best thing about the EQG is that it will be much cheaper to run than the old one while still looking absolutely brilliant. Okay, while we're on the subject of all conquering 4x4s, Toyota Land Cruiser, that's coming soon. And it hasn't gone electric, in fact it's a diesel. Remember those? There will be a hybrid as well though in 2025, so at least Toyota is modernizing things a little bit. In every way though, the new Land Cruiser is everything you'd expect it to be. Body and frame chassis, locking differential, and a crawl control mode for the steepest of mountains or Middle England driveways. Now, Toyota has improved the on-road refinement, giving it a far less wobbly chassis, 30% stiffer, that's a lot, and electric power steering for the first time, designed to reduce that kickback when the ground underneath you kicks back. In an effort to be all things to all people and also to entice people out of their Land Rover Defenders, the cabin's also taken a big step towards luxurious. Hence, one of the trim levels is actually called luxurious. You can even have it with seven seats as well. Next up, another Dacia, the Duster. Like the Spring, it will be unbelievably cheap, but unlike the Spring, it won't feel like a car built to a specific price point. In fact, as Dacias go, the new Duster will be quite cutting edge. It's moved onto the same platform as the Nissan Juke, so it should be 100 times more refined than old Dusters, and that also means it will come with a hybrid this time around. Don't worry though, Dacia fans, you'll still be able to get a version that can run on LPG, and it's proper off-road capable. Well, the ones with four-wheel drive anyway, with those versions getting additional ground clearance and a bunch of off-road modes. And it also has a feature called U-Clip, which isn't Latvian YouTube, but a load of heavy duty mounts dotted through the cabin that you can attach accessory holders to. So, still a functional car. Having said that, it'll feel like the most modern Dacia ever made. It's even got a floating central touchscreen and a digital instrument panel, all for less than 20 grand. Bring it on. Okay, next up, the Hyundai Ioniq 5N. N being, of course, Hyundai speak for very fun. And I'm gonna call it Hyundai forever, by the way. Some background first, right? N Division's technical advisor is Albert Bierman. And if you know his name, you'll know that some of the cars he made included legends like the E39 M5, E46 M3, and the 1M Coupe. Good CV. 
and every Hyundai N product so far has exceeded expectations. The Kona N crossover had no right to be as much fun as it was. That makes me proper excited for the Ioniq 5N. Like the Kona, the Ioniq 5 shouldn't be the basis for a specialist high performance car. It's a fat, comfortable EV, but just look at this thing. It looks like the main character in Need for Speed, and it's got tricks up its sleeve. For a start, 650 horsepower, 740 newton meters of torque, all-wheel drive. It'll do 0 to 62 in 3.4 seconds. It's got active aero to keep it on the ground, and for visceral feel, a system that mimics the feeling of a gear shift. That's the first ever EV to do that, and it's going to cost 65k. Ah, I need one of these. I really do. Looking forward to it. All right, that's my list for 2024. Some good stuff in there, and there's more. We've got things like the Lotus Emea, which will take on the Taycan and Model S. There's the Hyundai Ioniq 7, which could easily become one of the best seven-seater family cars on sale, electric or otherwise. Taycan Turbo GT, which is a hyper version of the Taycan with a thousand horsepower. And of course, the Tesla Roadster, maybe. Probably, probably not. Anyway, good stuff, right? Remember, we're gonna have all this stuff and more on the channel in 2024. So make sure you subscribe, lock in, and I'll see you soon. Peace.